I'm going to attempt to do is tell the story of Strip, tell the story of where my gaze has gone, how particular it's been, how small and specific, and also how wide in general, and how I've tried to marry the effects of action both in a highly elitist congregation, you know, um, not elitist necessarily in a negative way, and also in the most uh, quotidian situation you could imagine, like garbage blowing around the street and um, places that uh, can't be cleaned for some one reason or another, and places that are so damn clean, you just want to die. <laughs> <laughs> because I think place is a very crucial thing. So I'll start out here with just talking about or showing how things work. It's my big question. How do they work? How does the human body work? What are its parts? It's my job when I examine a discipline to say, what can action do? But not just do, do best. What can it do that no other discipline can do? Not words, not movies, not, what's the other disciplines we have? Not science? You know, how do we dream and be specific about our dreaming and then represent it in a way that isn't just whimsical necessarily, but also that, but actually can create some kind of transformative change, I don't know, in the hearts and minds of people. Because when we make art, we're not really right building buildings or feeding people. And I think at every point in my life, I have to answer that question. And the work I do, I somehow want to connect it out there to the street. You know, we're all wild things roam and garbage blows. <laughs> oh, Danny, I need more volume here. Thank you. <laughs> Danny has been my guide on all this high tech stuff. It's gone again. This is our logo. <laughs> and our logo is very important for me to name and not be called the Elizabeth Strap Dance Company. Right? I wanted it to be a visual image so that you wouldn't have to think, you just see. And for many places that I went, every place we travel to, I want the theaters to put up this. And not once in one theater have I gotten them to do it. <laughs> they, say my, they think it's my last name. It's not my last name. It's our logo. And it is completely separate. It's a branding idea that I've been trying to do for the last uh, 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't mean I'm going to give up. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is like an all or none type of thing. Really. <laughs> is this driving anyone crazy this summer? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you just speak up over this. I'll change it. So the question is, like, what are the parts, what's the grammar of the human body? And what are the basic building blocks of, of action? And it starts for me with the body and what its parts can do. It starts with asking about the other elements, time, space, body, ground, air, and the things that we know that we take for granted that are there. I want to look at them and go, what does that mean? What are, their, what are the laws of space and the occupation of space? What are the laws of the body? You know, what's temporality? What does it mean physically to establish a timing system? And how can I be accurate and true to all of those elements once I take the very first move that I somehow have designed and thought to take? <coughs> okay, I've got to turn this down again. <laughs> <laughs> So the parts of the whole, and I want to start with the idea of isolating the body parts. When you look at this, and we know we're so familiar with our body, I want to say, oh, that must be the backs of the legs. isolated is a arm, but it looks very much like a knee, and so I start to wonder, can the arms do very much? The elbows be the knees, the wrists be the ankles, the hands be the feet. Can the function be the same? Can the shoulders operate technically like the feet? I mean, the hips, and therefore, can we do things with the arms that perhaps we wouldn't ever before have thought to do, like take the weight of the human body when you're falling down? And, and how much force 
can the body parts take before they break. And for us, I'm not a scientist, so I don't check out, you know, I know that you guys do, you do these um, vector drawings, right? <laughs> you go, if it's a vector, it has both magnitude and direction, so you go one direction, force here, and then you go the other direction, and then you add them together and you get a, a resultant. Yes! <laughs> and then when you do that, you start to assess, oh, that means that's too much, the bone's going to break, <coughs> the joint's going to explode, right? For us, we go, how high can we fall from? Let's try 10 feet. Whammo! <laughs> Didn't feel so bad. <laughs> and then you say, well, how high can you go before you break? Because the truth is, I really think that a lot of measurements, and I huge respect to measurements, but sometimes I think, wow, if I had listened to the measurement, I'd say, better not do that. Right? Because after all, the body's not made to do half the things we do as many times as we do them. The other thing we do is an extension of the body, and I, I want to introduce this right away, is we utilize equipment. And it's functional actions and the tools to perform them. In terms of utilizing specialized prototypic equipment um, that we call machines, sometimes, um, we want to expand the universe both spatially and physically of what the body can do and where it can go. And when it gets there, it becomes a temporal thing. Because sometimes you can steal some time. So you never think you can mutate time to grab a little more time in the air or a little more this or that. Because there's also, who said that? I know, I'm so excited to have scientists in the audience. You don't know who said this. I just collect sayings and I don't know who But um, every mammal, every, um, every moving thing on Earth can jump just about the same distance from the ground, which ends up being about a meter, a flea or a cat. Is it, is it true? They do that in <laughs> So the question is, since we're in space and very often we have rooms, and this is a perfect room I think for the size of a body, that in some theaters that really go up 30 and 50 feet, we right away wanted to get our frame in, in uh, our framing in, in a certain kind of order. So. Here's some ideas about the machinery. This is the box truss number one. And you can see that it has a top, a bottom, and four posts. And it's about a 20 by 20 foot cube. And it moves as well. So it has one ton chain motors in each post. This is box truss number two. It goes up 30 feet. The top part of it was meant because I wanted to attach to the 35 foot post so that within the 20 foot cube we could fly. Because if you attach to the 20 foot top, you can only go halfway up, right? The essence of jumping and returning, mostly with bungees and whatnot, and trampolines. This is a third box truss, and this is the one we're using now. I wanted to show you some of the action equipment that we use for the actual pieces. Every